Sziasztok! Hey all. I'd like to talk to you about a lot, but I don't have too much time. So I just skip the uh, unnecessary parts like introduction. Hi, my name is uh, Zsombor Kovac. I love beer. Before proceeding, who of you has there been a Wi-Fi workshop before? No, not yet. Oh, okay. I wanted to ask you who attended, but uh, the question is unnecessary in this case. So I'll talk about Wi-Fi. And as I checked the program, the agenda, I managed to give it a qu quite a long title, and the translators abbreviated it pretty much, replacing it with something similar. So we'll be talking about Wi-Fi, and. From the point of view of, okay, when you look at Wi-Fi security development, how Wi-Fi security developed over time, then you'll find a very interesting trend. When this whole Wi-Fi thing got off the ground, well, you can uh, debate the exact year, but it was a very attractive technology and became used increasingly and increased number of security problems turned out to be in the system. One was that over the air wireless data were sent unencrypted, they can be, li they can be listened to and around 2000 roughly uh, wireless oh, listening uh, became more widespread. The first encryption uh, attempt was WEP, WEP. Who has already broken WEP? Great. Who has clicked more than twice while doing so? Right, so you were not using the backtrack tools that need two clicks to, cl to crack a WEP code. So when it turned out that WEP is totally unusable for encrypted traffic, then came WPA, which used the same hardware architecture uh, that was used under web, but uh, had a better key management, which provided quite a good security. WPA 802.x was quite good. Obviously, they can o they are only good if the system is uh, set up well and the network is okay. Then the attack. The, the attack surface is not too big. I currently do not know of any attack uh, that would succeed independent of the type and length of the key and independent of everything else. So WPA or WPA 2802.11x uh, systems cannot really be cracked in a general manner. Wi-Fi, however, is much more rounded against out of service uh, attacks than normal wired uh, cable networks. The reason I have discussed this, I talked about this, is that as we today see, the network is less and less vulnerable, and attackers concentrate primarily, for the reasons I have just explained, that there are no silver bullet uh, attacks are turning towards the clients because client protection is a bit lower level so clients are a lot more vulnerable than a well set up network so we are investigating the uh, threat where an attacker uh, 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 installs a uh, malicious access point to which clients connect later on. And the root of the problem is that for the, 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 the clients uh, cannot really identify the network structure without a pretty big infrastructure. The network has a few important parameters like the name of the network and the access point address. And a 
for, for, a, for a Wi-Fi client, these are the two bits of information that decides whether a network is known or not. If you look at the uh, order to do dot X standard, then you will see that these things all go in clear text. So if I uh, observe the MAC address that goes through the network, then I can impersonate those uh, MAC addresses in most of the cases. I've also written about exploits that target the Windows drivers of wireless cards. For instance, in Metasploit's current repo, there are a couple of such things. What we utilize here, OK, wireless clients not only monitor beacons passively, but also, in a general case, they have a list of what networks they like to connect to. And they broadcast to find these networks, this is saying, this is my MAC address. I'm looking for this and this AP. These also go in plain text. And if we, as attackers, respond, we can get these uh, clients, uh, the wireless cards as well, to connect to our access point believing that we are authentic. This uh, wireless access point is about this much worth uh, for the clients. There's a couple of cl uh, data that you can impersonate, and uh, uh, from that point onwards, you're trusted by the clients. I'm not talking about the 802.x uh, authentication system. Now, what happens when we, when a Windows client, it, it, it could be any client, it just, uh, it's just an example. If, you, if the client connects uh, to the network, Windows clients in the first, in the first couple of DNS requests uh, provide information about themselves and about the network they are normally living on, or about the domain. And these DNS requests tell us what the domain name is. And if there are multiple sites on the tower, then they tell us the, the one that they belong to. This is the standard Windows operation. And when other software are also installed, like Flash Player, or whatever, that loves to look for access points, it will start to synchronize with ntp.ubuntu.com, for instance, to do so. Have you read about this vulnerability that American iPhones, provided by a specific provider, so if that you can, so it can be used to to use the internet. A couple of people knows this for free. So American researchers have found out that I don't want to mention the the uh, provider, the ISP, but on that ISP's network, uh, this uh, header, f th th these fake headers allow the hacker to make the network believe that we are on the network, we are part of the network, and author author authorized to 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 to, to serve. What other data are? OK, so these are the data that the clients broadcast. And the client connects to a network because it would like to uh, do some traffic in addition to updating. So practically, we can uh, do a man in the middle attack. We are the access point. We are the default gateway for the client. And all traffic is routed through us which allows us a lot of good, good goodies to do. All plain text client traffic can be replaced, modified, you know. If we look at an active uh, access, SMP relay, who knows the term, SMP relay? OK, not many. SMP relay is an attack where 
that we, where we utilize a stupidity of the Windows SMB protocol, allowing us. So if we can make a Windows-based computer to connect to our SMB server for downloading a picture, for instance, then we can link back with the same challenge that he sent us. So as an end result of the attack, we could even uh, end up being able to execute code, but this needs some luck as well. The client also issues DNS requests. Uh, Facebook and similar things are looked for, and the specific IP address uh, that we provided uh, will, will be used to query. We are the, uh, the, the, the ones they will query in this case, in which case cross domain policy is dead, because if I say that it should uh, dis dis uh, download XSS, uh, a script from XSS dot whatever, uh, and then it, the computer, the client asks, "What is the exact email uh, uh, URL?" And we tell it the uh, our URL address, our fake URL address, which would then allow us to inject things in this, uh, into anything. And the third interesting area is obviously we are in the same network as the client, and from this point onwards, we can do anything, uh, uh, sending exploits. Uh, owning the machine. Uh, this reminds me of a very cute little film. Okay, you know why I showed it to you. The, whatever the client does uh, will harm it. If it tries to browse something, we'll attack it. If it doesn't, we attack it. If he issues a DNS request, he'll get the response we give it. So it's a pretty severe threat. Now, for this reason, and obviously it was not us, uh, we were not the first ones to realize this and to recognize this. Therefore, some other people looked around. I didn't smell the air, but I'm sure that at least uh, w there is at least one DNS exploit which uh, would do another uh, very, very um, nasty things, in addition to what's written uh, by the entrance that don't link here. A free internet, a free public Wi-Fi, HP setup, uh, or any. Uh, my any was a network at an as an airport. This was uh, my favorite. It wasn't easy to find it because uh, there were like 15 access points sending the same. Now, this part type of uh, attack. If there's a malicious attack, then obviously. It is worth finding a place uh, where there is high traffic, um, a lot of laptops, and then people are quite often waiting. You know, they just look at what sort of uh, networks there are. So, uh, networks, uh, uh, airports, plaza, shopping malls, cafes. These would be typical faces, fa places uh, to use these um, um, exploits. Now. There are a lot of tools that you can use. Um, you can use a lot of things. Uh, Karma exploit. Who knows the Karma exploit? It's a meta exploit. Who knows that? Now the Karma exploit is a meta exploit. Meta exploit. Do you know what a meta exploit is? Yeah. Okay. Uh, that's uh, an uh, addendum to the meta exploit. Uh, actually, it uh, it uh, shoots up these access points, and point, and when uh, the network is being set, then it uh, uh, it launches the DNS server, and uh, and uh, uh, launches a lot of fake POP3 server, IMAP, FTP, and so forth. 
and the better exploit uh, the, the protocol is implemented uh, properly uh, as long as uh, uh, the uh, client, uh, actually the the, the, uh, the customer tells the password. So when we connect these together, and if uh, uh, someone wants to uh, connect to I'm um, uh, to IMAP, uh, and then uh, also uh, clicks on uh, the uh, certificate button, then he will see an IMAP server before he asks. Because obviously, when uh, you ask for your mail, then you don't find your mail, but your uh, password has been stolen. The same is true. Uh, web traffic can be uh, uh, can be done very well. Beef, does it say that it's ring a bell? Beef, uh, this is a tool uh, that injects a, a JavaScript into uh, any page. So between the client and between the server, um, like there is an access point, the default gateway, and then all the HTML pages into all of the pages, it would put a JavaScript, a small JavaScript, uh, which JavaScript uh, would uh, force the browser to um, link, to connect to a, a, a malicious server like our server, and then uh, you, you know we can uh, steal anything. Uh, you know we can uh, uh, um, steal the. Uh, um, clipboard and quite a lot of things uh, I think you should look you should you should look into it because a lot of nasty things are available uh, or can be done with it SMB uh, shares here now uh, with SMB sharing if, if the uh, client uh, uh, connects to that and we as a server have a, a pre hard-coded challenge then the client, uh, based on the uh, client's uh, re uh, response, we can just uh, uh, reverse engineer the, the password. Uh, this is like 40 gigs. And this challenge can be used then uh, to obtain the user uh, password by injecting a link uh, to the page uh, showing at a certain uh, uh, to the page showing a certain picture. Now, since we were uh, testing the tool, there were two very nice stories uh, happening. One was that I traveled a lot those days. And uh, at one of the airports, I was uh, playing with this tool. <laughs> it was very difficult to put it together in the beginning. And then uh, we, I boarded the plane. We took off. And I said, there, there's no one. Because no one wants to uh, connect to me. Uh, anyway, this is going to work then. And we are flying in the air, like, you know, 12, 13,000 uh, meters. And then I said, Airbus Internal Control System Wi-Fi. This is what I named my network. And I'm sure no one would try to connect. There is nothing here. If it works, then it works. And it started to work. And then, like, 10, 15 seconds, someone came. And what do you think the first page was he wanted to open in the browser? We are flying 12 kilometers high. And then Airbus internal Wi-Fi network. This is what the uh, job, the bloke, uh, logged on to. Youporn.com. This is what he wanted to uh, connect to. And then uh, I was again testing the tool somewhere when the SMP challenge uh, uh, thing, what you can use to reverse engineer uh, the password. So when the user is browsing, then the HTML page, you have a one, a one times one, uh, one uh, times one picture. Uh, look at this JPEG. This was actually this. And, And if there is uh, no uh, domain, uh, there is no, no Windows domain uh, in, uh, connected, then uh, tries an authentication. If it doesn't work, then there is a, 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 a window saying, hi, friend, here is your, net, here is your password. Now, if someone uh, is really taken by that, then that's really silly. It's really stupid. But that stupid bloke came, and then the chap connected, and there were like 100, 150 logins, logins uh, uh, in like 50, you know, in a short while. And then 
uh, he uh, on the internet I found which uh, a word list he was trying. So he tried, he tried to hack my malicious access point. <laughs> And then the second uh, part of the story, how much time do I have? Okay, so why I was uh, telling this to you, this was the, the theoretical background. And uh, the company where I'm working, uh, we, had a, we had a work, and uh, uh, our uh, job was uh, uh, to... <laughs> was uh, to carry out this uh, attack. Actually, the customer said we can do anything. Uh, he just said we should uh, uh, obtain certain information. We could use uh, social engineering. Uh, we could go there. Uh, so a lot of things we could uh, do. And the idea was this was a uh, 802x, uh, uh, 802.1x authentication, and I was in the group, which group uh, said that we should uh, 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 do this attack against one of the employees because they had beautiful networks and probably they uh, use the uh, beautiful uh, uh, net uh, computers, uh, laptops at home as well. Um, so pr this seems to be a good target. Social engineering part, this is something I will uh, talk about later. We anyway found out that we would uh, do this uh, uh, attack, and this is how we would get this certificate. And what were the problems uh, we were faced with? This Tom and Jerry thing uh, works very well in the lab. You put it together, uh, start it with the script and everything, the network is there, and uh, if the Windows client is asking for some uh, uh, network, then the network will uh, lie that, he, uh, that this is the network, so it works properly. But it's one thing that you do it in a lab, and another thing if you can do it. If you can do it in the field with a specific client, with a specific environment. Now, this is something I haven't read too much about, because most of the presentations uh, are, are over after uh, the previous slide, saying that, yes, this is an attack, you can do it. But if we really want to do it, then there are quite a lot of, uh, um, uh, quite a lot of uh, mines. Who are the ones who, learned, who t read Wi-Fi security book? articles, anything about Wi-Fi security. Good. Now, who is the one who uh, read the part about the antenna? Because normally this is chapter one after the uh, preface. Two, three, good. Okay, everyone just skips this part, although this is very important. Because when there is such a specific uh, work, what matters is what sort of antenna you use. This small black antenna, this is what normally comes with the tools, with the devices, and the characteristics of this small antenna does not make it possible to direct it. So, so this is getting weaker and weaker uh, with the distance. And with some other antennae, like the Yagi and some of them put here, uh, the, the characteristics are absolutely different. And we should uh, try to start playing around with them, because quite often the problem is when we want to hack such an access point, um, or we want to uh, act, uh, pretend that we were an access point, uh, we are not being uh, heard by the target. So if the target, if the client doesn't hear us uh, because our beacons uh, are too weak, then there is not going to um, connect to us. And then the other thing is that when you use this uh, in, in the field, then obviously you run it from your battery. And then uh, the, in order to save the battery, then obviously your uh, transmit power is going to be reduced. 
by the system. Now, next one, what sort of environment should we start doing this? I did this on Heathrow, a screenshot. What a Windows client sees, what is in the air. This is like 50 some access points, uh, three to four different networks. I don't know who uh, the free Wi-Fi was, it wasn't me. So what comes from that is that so many access points, these are all uh, physical devices, and it's quite a lot of noise, okay, from our perspective, because we, as small laptop users, cannot compete with the transmit power of uh, the big uh, uh, of the big um, uh, devices. Uh, therefore, this 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 is one of the shortfalls. So, if you uh, try it this way then it is like as if you're uh, at an Iron Maiden pro concert and you want to uh, listen to music over your phone. And obviously, this would still result in the fact that our client is not going to um, 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 s uh, hear us and see us and therefore not going to connect. Therefore, let me show you a video after this slide. This was the part when there is quite a lot of access points around. Uh, and also, if there are a lot of too many clients on the other side, that's not good again. Because the clients, as I said, they're all transmitting. Uh, they're all, all actually uh, sh are shouting after their own Wi-Fi, known Wi-Fi networks. And if we try to answer all of those calls, then our device is not going to be able uh, to uh, transmit so many beacons. And that would be enough uh, to pretend that you were all of those access points. Let me show you a video. This again is a known video. A lot of the Wi-Fi client concentration here was uh, quite big, okay? This is real time. What you can see, you can see uh, the time, but this is real time. You can sh see that so many access points uh, you cannot pretend that you were all of those uh, uh, access points with what you're, with your uh, card alone. So the other thing is that when when we do this specifically, we don't want to pretend that we are so many access points because we want uh, want one MAC address. Uh, uh, what uh, the access points want to see, and this is what we want to uh, do. And therefore, we have to take uh, very good care about that. I talked about uh, this uh, tool, uh, this device that we. Uh, uh, made. Let me show a couple of videos about it. Now it's uh, launched. I don't know to what extent you can see it. You can see those letters, but uh, nothing. You cannot really read it, what's written there. Anyway, just believe me, this is, the, this is it. So what's happening and there's nothing uh, homemade here, home developed here. Everything is just um, internet, internet downloaded, like the Karma exploit I was talking about. Then uh, it, here's the Metasploit, which is running here. You won't be able to read it, so therefore you must believe me. We use the SSL trip, which is uh, Merlin Skype's uh, uh, Spike's um, uh, creature. And from the HTTPS uh, 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 connection, it always kicks back uh, the client to an HTTP connection. Uh, so what it does, if you're on HTTPS, it will uh, uh, guide you back to HTTP. And then, uh, obviously, the, and then obviously, the browser is not going to cry for the uh, uh, authentication or the uh, certificate. certificate because there's no certificate uh, in the first place. So. As I said, when there's an XP client uh, connecting, what happens? This is when this is a virtual machine which has a physical uh, net card, and uh, the network card will be visible quite soon. Again, this is something you cannot read from the back, but as soon as you find uh, the network controller, uh, then uh, it starts shouting for the networks that it uh, knows, and we are going to give him the network. Uh, he wants to get. 
I mean the one he knows. Okay, this is the, v, uh, the Wi-Fi card, you can see, and the GU uh, uh, V01, this is the, the Wi-Fi he's looking for, and he has already connected to us without us doing anything. I stop it. I don't know to what extent you can see, but the DNS requests show that he is uh, living in dummy dot uh, uh, domain. Um, he does a lot of other things as well. But as soon as it's here, uh, they start uh, to transfer through our network. So generate traffic to, through our network. And the other thing which can be very funny is when you launch this device, then there are quite a lot of smartphones which say, oh, there's Wi-Fi here. And immediately, they just uh, connect to it. Um, and it is really, it, 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 it hurts you. It is so bad. So if you do not switch on the Mac filter, then uh, an, an abundance of iPhones and Blackberries uh, uh, just uh, want to connect you. And then this is a noise for us when we're testing, so we don't want that. And therefore, uh, the solution is you should, you should attack in an isolated environment that is an ideal world where there is only us <laughs> where we only us and the and the prey and only us as an attacker too and we should also apply client filtering to go back to work we have to know what the mac address of uh, the uh, of the prey is because without that you won't be able to filter to single out uh, him uh, from every, anyone else uh, uh, concerning the requests and then and this is nothing. This is all nothing so far, because the client has uh, uh, joined our network in uh, uh, quote unquote, uh, because this is a difficult issue what to do, because probably we have only, uh, we can only do it once. And then if we screw it, then the client is going to uh, uh, realize that this is not a good thing. So probably we won't have another chance uh, at uh, going at it. So. Now, we also need our client, uh, you know, to, to, to uh, connect to us. And then the client does nothing. Uh, he just uh, connected to our network and does nothing. Like, let's say, just start, starts uh, typing in a report. Uh, this is very frustrating that you have it. He's already in your trap, but he's not having any activity that you can, uh, uh, you can uh, 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 drill into. So, and then you're sitting there and waiting the the job, uh, the chab to do something, and he's doing nothing. He's just uh, sitting, hanging on your network. And then you say, "Okay, let's attack. Let's uh, turn the whole thing around, and let's let it, let it let it be ourselves who attack." Um, what sort of exploits should we use then? The problem is that uh, you you uh, uh, you query the uh, vulnerabilities. You have a number of vulnerabilities. And then, obviously, you want to have a stable exploit because you don't want to crush the computer of the prey, or you don't want to um, uh, freeze the computer of the prey because then, again, you can do anything uh, because you don't, you don't have another shot at it. Or you do all of them. I mean, send all of those exploits. Um, now, this device does this because you, they, it has everything on stock. And then whenever the client starts to do something, then he will attack with the right uh, uh, tool. Uh, uh, we use the MS0867 uh, to attack the client. Uh, this, uh, in case of, uh, of uh, a success, would give you the local system rights, system admin rights, uh, uh, no, system rights. And uh, this is what we did, and it was successful. And this gave uh, us two con uh, conclusions. Uh, that is that the patching is not uh, uh, the last patching was not really um, uh, strict because that was uh, this was a, a two years ex uh, two years old exploit and it was it wasn't patched out yet, and then from that point on, that we have an access to the client from the registry, we could uh, take away the the certificate that it takes to uh, uh, join uh, to connect to the uh, uh, enterprise network, the corporate network. Uh, so then we attack the client uh, because the client, uh, the client's uh, uh, defense was obviously much uh, uh, less 
effective than that of the uh, corporate or the enterprise network. And this is what I wrote here. Uh, social engineering uh, guys also managed to get into the server room and then they enter the server room uh, with a, a pen They just put a pen, pen there. Uh, anyone who opened the door, the pen just fall, fell in and didn't let the uh, uh, the door uh, close back again, and they were able to go in. That's what they did. And then the guys, and then the guys, they also submitted the pen with the report saying that this is the pen we used uh, to get into the server room. Now, what are uh, the uh, lessons learned? First of all, as I said, this approach uh, is. Uh, uh, is bearing its fruits. So don't attack the part of the network that is uh, strongly protected. Attack the weakly protected parts. And the weakly protected part of the network is obviously with the, the guys who have access to it and have uh, their own devices. So um, it is very important uh, that these guys uh, should be trained. They should not uh, leave their Wi-Fi on. And they should not automatically uh, connect to networks uh, because what I said uh, uh, immediately, the client also has uh, the opportunity uh, to make sure uh, whether that's the person is looking for and not a uh, malicious access point. Now, the other, the third thing, Uh, the SMB and all, all the things I told you in the very beginning, what you can do with the client if it's uh, connected to a network, uh, that takes no that takes no joker access point to be uh, turned in. So if you just uh, uh, launch a free internet Wi-Fi, because there are a lot of free Wi-Fi's, and then when anyone uh, connects, you must you must uh, uh, consider that this is a very unre uh, unreliable environment. Uh, so when now I go to uh, a hotspot, I uh, have the uh, SSA, uh, the SSA fingerprint, uh, so that it cannot be faked uh, um, or falsified. Now that's activated. That's actually the thing I wanted to tell you. I have like ten minutes to go. No, okay. So this is time for questions. The floor is open for questions. Social engineering with the pen. Well, the task here, there was a B team. And what were the things that you have to do? And I think it had to be uh, documented, photo documented that they were in the uh, server room. And there was a very nice uh, try uh, that they also managed to uh, hook up on uh, the internal surveillance camera system. and. It was also uh, a target, an objective there, that uh, the uh, shots uh, of the internal security cameras uh, had to be have there. So they have a, a screenshot with like uh, with like the five pictures of the five security cameras, and then there were five guys holding a paper in their hand saying out. So uh, the question, how what was uh, the question was how did the social engineering part end? Well, it was a success. Good, I don't see anything of you. This is about the antenna, the aerials, okay? So Yogi antenna, if you use that, uh, that's a quite good directional antenna, so you can shoot your beam uh, to the infinity. And if we just, you know, target the client, uh, he's going to uh, hear us, but how are we going to hear uh, uh, the client? Um, uh, so yes, it's 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 absolutely correct the question because uh, it is a you know it's a two-sided coin and you just have one side so you have to either go closer to the, your prey or you have to select your the location of your attack in such a way that you hear uh, the reverse traffic as well uh, and the same thing is that uh, if we try to 
if we try to audit a very remote access point, and the access point uh, has a very strong uh, traffic, sorry, a very strong uh, transmission, uh, so we can hear it, but that is not going to hear us because uh, our output transmitted power is not uh, that strong, not that uh, strong, yes. So you still have... Okay, so the comment here is that uh, the Yagi, you need the Yagi, uh, you need the Yagi uh, to make your you as the strongest network so that you would be the preferred network and not only uh, not only to uh, 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 to reach the client. Yes, the answer is yes. So the objective is not. not only uh, so that the, the, our prey would listen to us, but that it would choose us from among the lot of access points. Uh, obviously, the point of uh, the attack is not that we are much stronger than all of the others, so we are not uh, sort of trying to jam the other access points um, in order to uh, make the force the client to uh, choose us at the reassociation. This type of hack also exists. But this is even more uh, difficult. So it is easier if the client uh, voluntarily chooses us because uh, we are uh, transmitting an SSID uh, which the client very much would like to uh, see and hear. And then he would choose us. Another good question, he said VPA, WPA or, or other uh, uh, type of uh, security key, uh, does it work with that as well? Uh, the fact is, yes, it does. Because the logic of the attack is even before the client would start to uh, trigger traffic, uh, initiate traffic. Obviously, it is their own uh, preference, uh, the client client's own preference, because in the SSID of the Wi-Fi uh, uh, network and at the handshake, uh, this is, again, uh, regardless whether there is security or not. And uh, there is a handshake at the beginning, uh, capability um, um, handshake, and then uh, the, 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 this, the network will tell you what sort of, uh, what sort of uh, security uh, protocols it does support and what it doesn't. And this is how you can find out to what extent it's uh, uh, secure or not. As an, as an attacker, we always launch an unencrypted access point uh, because you could, uh, you could shoot any other access points like with WPA or VPA. But then uh, that's a further problem because then the clients would like to use their own key. Uh, there are certain uh, uh, attacks uh, that are using this, and this is like a, a web cracking. Uh, but this is not what we use. We do not. Uh, uh, we are not interested in what uh, uh, the uh, network uh, uh, security key is, uh, because this is not our objective. Oh, I don't know if it was uh, understandable or clear. So the question was that if we uh, design the attack in such a way that uh, our network is, uh, our machine is not um, transmitting into the air, into the free space uh, as an access point, but in such a way that it's already connected to some network, then obviously the client is not um, connecting to the network but connecting to us. However, we can channel his traffic uh, to the, uh, to the uh, network we're connected to. And then we're in the middle, and this is how we're doing the... Uh... Yes, it is possible. There are such uh, uh, attacks. This is quite similar to what we do, um, but this starts out from the fact that that because of lousiness, uh, uh, because of lousiness, uh, uh, certain people leave the Wi-Fi on even if they have the cable uh, plugged in. 
the network cable uh, because but obviously uh, uh, on my machine uh, you can set the BIOS in such a way that if uh, my machine is uh, uh, if my computer is uh, um, is uh, uh, plugged into a network cable, uh, then uh, the Wi-Fi uh, is off. Uh, but if not, that's not the case, uh, it may happen that both uh, does both do work, uh, so that you're hooked up through the cable, and then still you have uh, the Wi-Fi open, um, and then you can do the same attack. And this is a uh, uh, this is something that exists, and they really do it. So they go to the. Uh, um, to the, uh, the you enter the network, uh, the secure network through the client. Okay, thank you very much for your uh, kind attention. My time is up. And should you have any further questions, notes, remarks, you will find me after the presentation. Thank you.